A few weeks after Elden Ring's release in 2022, I tried to beat the game without attacking anything. But this run wasn't clean. I used indirect damage and glitches, and ultimately, I wasn't even able to finish. But I promised myself that if they ever released a DLC, I would take my revenge. Well, now's the time to beat every boss in Shadow of the Air Tree without even damaging them once. So you might have noticed that a particular spirit ash appears a lot in that intro sequence, and I promise, things will become clear in due time. But for now, let's check out how the run began. Upon arriving in the DLC, I had a character around level 150 with a strength faith build, but that was about to change. The first step was to collect the new leveling items from the DLC. There's candidate fragments to make my character sustain more damage, but most importantly, the revered spirit ashes to make my spirit ashes deal and negate more damage. So I ran around everywhere collecting these. I got everything in the grey side plane and the dungeon in the west. The only ones I couldn't get were the ones contained in these pots carried by enemies, since I can't deal damage to them. Then I went all the way around the castle in the east to access Skadu Altus without having to fight any enemy, and I picked up more fragments there. This gave me access to Shadowkeep and the ancient ruins of Ra, both places yielding even more items. After all of that exploring, I was able to level my Skadutry Blessing to 8 and my Spirit Ash Blessing to 7. I traveled back to the main game to change my stats and went for a lot of vigor to survive hits, Mind to cast a lot of spells, and Faith so my heals would be more potent. I also upgraded the Archery Seal and equipped my arsenal of incantations. Golden Vow to buff my summon, Archery Heal for a giant heal, Blessing of the Archery for a nice healing over time, and finally, Heal from Afar, a new spell I did with the DLC I collected during my scavenging. There was only one thing left to figure out, what summon I was gonna use. As I didn't want to use Mimic Tear for this challenge, there were a few from the main game I had in mind. But I thought, if this is going to be a DLC challenge, I might as well use summons from the DLC. So I collected a few of them, and one seemed to stand out to me. Taylor the Golem Smith. This guy looked kinda cute, so I thought I'd start with him. I upgraded him fully, and headed to the Dancing Lion boss fight. So, there are a lot of things to say about Taelyu. First of all, the obvious one is that he does not take a lot of damage, but to counteract that, his health is quite low. At first I thought that meant that it wouldn't make much of a difference compared to other spirit ashes. But then I realized something important. Because his health is low, each heal is that much more impactful. With just one or two heals from afar, I could quickly top up his health so he could tank even more of the boss's attacks. His damage was quite low, but his survivability seemed to counteract that pretty efficiently. He also doesn't dodge, so most of the time he just gets staggered. Fortunately, bosses can't seem to be able to hit his weak point, so he's able to just shrug it off and stand back up. We're going to get into more details about him later, but that's it for our first Remembrance boss. As you can see, I still had a lot of flasks left, so not too hard of a boss fight. Huh? That was pretty easy. Wait. Why isn't he disappearing? Hello? The lion's roar is now silenced. A grim reminder that even kings must fall. Okay... At that point I was feeling very confident in Taelyu. And since I had unlocked most of the map, I went directly to Romina, the second to last boss of the DLC. I got through the fog gate, summoned Taelyu and hoped for the best. Here you can see another quite obvious thing about him. He's slow. Like, very slow. He spends most of his time trying to get in melee range, but with a boss that moves around so much, he struggles quite a lot. 
Thankfully, he has one ranged attack, where he can throw his fists for up to 4 times. That would pretty much solve everything, if not for the fact that he almost never uses it. I had a few scares during the fight since the boss was sometimes hitting me too, but by keeping my distance with heal from afar and trying to have Teryu be near full health at all times, the boss's health slowly dwindled down. Nine and a half minutes later, we collected another remembrance. This time Teryu just disappeared without contemplating his existence. What a weird golem. There is another major boss you need to defeat to beat the DLC, and that's Mesmer. Since things were going so well, I immediately teleported over there and summoned Teilu once more. If he was able to do this, maybe this pacifist run turns into a Teilu run. How could I betray him for another spirit ash after all the work he's put in? I mentioned before he gets staggered very often, but this is compensated by the fact that he never flinches. Whereas some other spirit ashes would get flung around during some of Mesmer's combos, he just stood there and took it all to the face. If a stagger didn't park, this would sometimes mean that he could punch Mesmer in the face during one of his combos. Impressive stuff. On my side, the strategy was pretty much the same. Just stay away with heals from afar, unless I need to apply buffs. Six and a half minutes later, Mesmer was down. So far, Teoyu beat every single boss on his first attempt. I was ready to teleport to the final boss and just finish this run. But Teilu didn't disappear when we killed Mesmer. Instead, he told me something. What's up, Teilu? Rest shall elude us until every trace of evil is purged from the world, for darkness knows no slumber. Well, I guess we got some traveling to do. I decided to try and face Commander Gaius next. He grants access to 5 scattery blessings, so I thought it would help me with not dying to attacks while keeping Teoyu healed up. While we watch the fight in the background, I can tell you about a big blunder I made during this run. I leveled my strength to be able to wield the commander standard, only to find out, after the run, that it doesn't stack with Golden Vow. I also had a bunch of uplifting armatic, but these don't seem to stack either. So my apologies if over the course of the rest of the video, you see me override one buff after the other for no reason. I was just trying to get my boy tell you to be as strong as possible, you know? There were also many other buffs I was considering, but for now I thought it was alright to spend my mana on heals and only equip those if I were to struggle on a boss. When Gaius was about 15% health, I actually died, leaving tell you all alone. I needed to give it another shot and we were done in about 4 minutes this time. Then I headed to Velana, and with her being a somewhat early game DLC boss, Teoyu absolutely smashed her. She also doesn't really have a lot of wide AoEs, so I was pretty safe to cast most heals, even while being close to the action. I thought her damage in phase 2 would be too much, but it really wasn't. She barely scratched my summon, and 4.5 and minutes later, she was no more. I wanted to unlock the dragon area next, so I headed towards the ancient dragon man. Unfortunately, the boss invades you before you reach his lair, and you can't summon in that area. I thought of just killing him, but I feel like that wouldn't really fit the idea of the run. So I let him just deal with himself. Can you please jump off? Oh, thank you. Then I took Teoyu to smash the boss version of him. The boss actually somehow had better damage than some of the Remembrance bosses, but it wasn't too much trouble, as he just got knocked around the whole time. I wasn't quite ready to face Bale, so I ran all the way south to the Surlin coast and into the Stone Coffin Fissure. That was probably the hardest area to get through just because of the laser worms shooting me from 10 different angles. I had to hide in a corner at some point to heal because I was getting overwhelmed. Once all the way down, we faced the Petrescent Knight. One interesting thing to point out here is that it seems that the targeting for the guy and his horse are separate from one another. There were a lot of times during his combo that he focused Teoyu while his horse was trying to take me down. It took about 5 minutes, but that was another remembrance required.
Now is the time to face a boss that I was dreading going to. And it's not even a remembrance boss, but he does block the path to getting one. So I had to take him down. This boss was Jory, Elder Inquisitor. Why did I think this would be a nightmare? Well, because he teleports around the arena and tell you just walks towards him. Slowly. Like very, very slowly. And then the dude just teleports again. I was pretty sure I would have to go for another summon for that fight, but I would at least give tell you a few tries. We fought for 12 long minutes, slowly chipping away at the boss's health bar. But in second phase, he starts summoning a lot of people. And tell you just struggles even more to get to him, because he gets distracted by all of the summons. But I had a one more trick up my sleeve. Yep, you saw it correctly. Taylor just teleported. I was surprised the first time it happened, but it seems if I go far enough away from him, he sometimes teleports right next to me. It was highly inconsistent and rarely happened, so I didn't fully grasp how it worked, but it helped to close the distance from time to time. Eventually, the boss got quite low on health and I made a mistake. I wasn't super joyful at the idea of going for another run, but I couldn't give up just yet, so I went in once more. 13 minutes in and I made another big mistake. On my third and last attempt, I was locked in. I wasn't going to make a mistake here. This was a stamina fight and we had more than this goddamn congregation of losers. It took 15 minutes, but Taylor did it. Not only did I get access to a new area here, but also a few skeletry fragments, as well as another spirit ash blessing, allowing me to upgrade my summons to plus eight. This is where the run is a little bit controversial. I really wanted to be a pacifist, but it is impossible to summon during the first phase of the boss fight. And I haven't really found a way to get past that, so I just um, poked him. Sorry. Once the second phase starts, I can summon tell you, and the real fight begins. This guy has some decent damage, but once again, aside from a few big AoEs, I could stay rather close, and his attacks wouldn't really hit me if he focused tell you. One thing you may have noticed during previous fights, but I thought I'd point out here, is that tell you is immune to every single grab attack from any boss. These usually deal tons of damage, and you can't heal someone caught in a grab, so this made him even more resistant during most fights. As this boss doesn't really run around too much, even with his high HP, the fight was over in about 6 minutes. Since we got through one fight I was dreading earlier, I decided to go for the other one I didn't think we'd be able to get past, the Withered Sunflower. This boss basically has 3 health bars and usually has a weak spot on its head for massive damage, but I didn't think Telyu would have the intelligence required to actually focus the head. Also in phase 2, the boss dashes around a lot and I was sure Telyu would just struggle with that. But I shouldn't have underestimated him. He was actually hitting the head somewhat consistently and with him being immune to grabs, he just stood in front and dealt with phase 1 quite easily. Phase 2 took quite a while longer because of the dashes, but by slowly walking up and sometimes using his ranged attacks on the head, Telu was able to get rid of it as well. Phase 3 adds these holy explosions, but it didn't deal that much damage, so I wasn't worried. Turns out maybe I should have been. Oh shit, the edge is here. No! Well, that's 13 minutes down the drain. We go again. The fight actually took much longer this time, and I almost died multiple times. But 21 minutes into the fight, Tell you had enough and sniped the boss mid combo. Please let me go home now. Well, we still have a few bosses to defeat. Next up, the Mother of Fingers. But once again, before reaching the boss fight, an invader shows up. Fortunately, they don't have a lot of will to live, so after a quick game of hide and seek, they just, um, yeah. I was pretty scared of facing this boss because of one attack in phase 2, this huge AoE storm that the boss summons. 
Normally you can just stay out of it, and if you don't, you get knocked back into a safe spot pretty quick. But Taelu does not get knocked back. Ever. Meaning he will tank the whole storm, every single time the boss does it. Thankfully, the new DLC spell is exactly what we needed to keep him alive whenever the boss decided to do that move. One thing I probably should have mentioned earlier is that you can also aim at the ground with the spell to cast it around you instead of betting on the fact that your allies won't move out of the way of it. This makes it a really good, quick option to heal yourself as well. All around, just an incredible healing spell. The fight was quite stressful, and Telius' health did drop low a few times, but after 10 minutes, we beat the boss in our first attempt. There weren't a lot of bosses left, so I ran through the last area of the DLC and summoned Taelu against the gank squad. It turns out, I didn't really speak to any NPC during this run, so I only had to fight three of them. Honsent, Dryleaf Dane, and Needle Knight Leather. There was just one problem. Dane's damage against Taelu was massive. I had to heal a lot, and my flasks were rapidly depleting. Honsent having no heals meant he died quick but Leda and Dane just melted my summon. Especially when Leda used this uh, spinning circle incantation since Taylor just couldn't get out of it. I used absolutely everything I had and the fight ended about eight and a half minutes later. Bale technically isn't a remembrance boss, as he drops his heart when defeated, but I'd say he's one of the major bosses of this DLC, and tell you, deserves to earn his official Dragon Slayer title. Before we reach Bale, there's an area with two dragons fighting each other, and I thought I'd defeat them to be able to summon Egon during the fight if I needed to. So I summoned tell you, and he started to fight the dragon. Turns out, this was one of the most excruciatingly painful experiences of my life. Dragons just keep flying around all the time, and he just can't get to them. And even when he does, his damage is just abysmal. I still decided to give it a good try, so I kept him alive and just hoped for the best. I kid you not, I was there for about 47 minutes. Just one fight, until eventually, this happened. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. Here's to hoping that Telyu can take down Bale by himself. There were a few problems with this fight. The first one is that Bale flies around a lot in phase 2, meaning that there aren't a lot of windows for my summon to deal damage. Another problem is that most of his attacks are huge AoEs, meaning I wasn't safe to heal aggressively and I had to be careful not to die as well. And finally, there was this attack. Because of these three things, it took a few attempts. But after a 16 minutes long, fierce battle, Taelu became the first Dragon Slayer Golem Smith. One boss left, and this was going to be a hard one, Radan. It took me about 10 hours to beat this guy during my first playthrough. I just couldn't handle the second phase. So I wasn't super excited to see him again. But I wasn't alone this time around. Me and Telyu had spent hours honing our synergy by that point. We were ready. Telyu was getting staggered a lot, but Rodan is one of these bosses that stay in your face constantly. So even though I had to heal Telyu all the time, he was able to deal some good damage. One big worry was the meteor attack, since once again, Telyu does not get knocked to the ground, meaning he will take damage from every single meteor, and that's quite a lot. Phase 2 was even more troublesome, as most attacks were accompanied by huge AoEs, meaning I had to worry about my own survival much more. Fortunately, Taelu's grab attack immunity came in handy during this fight, as he couldn't get executed by getting grabbed twice. 
This meant a free punish every time Rodan went for a grab. And after 9 minutes of fierce battling and 2 FP flasks left, Teilu delivered the final blow. Then he just faded away without saying a word. And just like that, Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree was beaten without attacking anything and only had to use a single Spirit Ash to beat every Remembrance boss. Thank you for watching. Please give Tell you some love by summoning him if you get the chance. See you next time.